what we have uh, just in the, said in the previous lecture. The, the different methods for, for following up the project. The first one we use when we compare the actual cost with the scheduled cost, budgeted cost. We go out to this S curve and we compare what was the actual compared it to the planned cost. And we say this method is not very, very effective because it doesn't tell us what we have used this money for. And then we use this tracking chart in which we compare the planned amount of work that must be completed, we compare it with the actual performance. And this is not good because we overlook here, using this method, we overlook how much money, what, what was the amount of resources used. It doesn't tell us anything about the productivity. It only tells us about time. And the method that we would like you to learn now is this method, the earned value method. Something that connects together the performance, the amount of work you have done, the actual cost and the budget cost, which and this is called the earned value method. In order to harass, there are some important terms you need to, to learn, or abbreviations that are important to study. First one is the term PV. PV is referred to the planned value. This, this is the amount we look at on this curve. This is our S curve, and the uh, first one we produce is this one, plan value. This is our plan, accumulated costs, or accumulated man hours. And then, the end value, this something represent what is the value of the work you have produced. For instance, if we are talking about putting the boards on the floor again. You have, your plan is to finish, let's say, with 100 square meter of this floor. That was the plan. And then somebody come, an expert, and look at what you have done, and you say, well, you have only produced 70% of this plan target. What is your plan value in this case, our end value? It is 70 square meters. This is one method to calculate this earned value. There's other methods. For instance, let's say the project or the task, it is to produce one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of these chairs. And then somebody comes in the room and check what is the value? What is the value of each of the chairs that have been produced? Maybe the value of the chairs that have been produced co does not correspond to nine chairs, but maybe corresponds to eight chairs or seven chairs or six chairs. So this is the, there are different methods of looking at this end value. But then we have to convert this end value to, to a number. And we put these three numbers on the screen. And now when you have these three numbers, three parameters, the actual cost, and the planned value, and the end value, and then from these numbers, we define two important parameters. They help us to identify the future trends of this project. The first one is what we refer to as SPI, Schedule Performance Index. And this schedule performance index is very simple. It's equal to end value divided by planned value. And as you can see, this one gives us an indication about where are we in terms of time. That's why it's called schedule performance index. Where are you in, term, in terms of time? If this one is more than one, what does it mean? If your SPR is much more than one, <coughs> higher than one, what does it mean? It means that you are ahead of schedule. And if this one is much, much less than one, 
it means that you are lagging behind the schedule. And then you have to do something about that. The second one, which is also important, is the cost performance in the CPR. If this one, which is N value divided by actual cost. If this is one higher than one, it means that you, your team is producing more than what were expected from them. They are using less amount of resources to produce what they were supposed to produce. And if it's less than one, it means that they are simply either lazy or inexperienced. They don't have the skills necessary to produce this amount of work. So maybe it's experience or they are not good. And then that these two define the trend, how things look like. From these two, we can even predict the future. And the, for, the formula is very simple. We can predict estimated cost at completion. And according to the formula, it is CPI, the planned value of the project divided by the CPI. For instance, if we here, for this example, I told you, your actual value, earned value was 600. And your planned value was 1,200. And your actual value or actual cost was 1,500. So what is your STI here? It is 600 divided by 1,200, which is 50%. And the second one, CPI, it is 600 divided by 1,500, which gives you how much? 6 divided by 15, 2 by 5, 40. So for this example we use here, the cost performance index is 40% and the schedule performance index is 50%. Now we can predict, if we are standing here, we can predict the future by these two formulas. The first one, it says actual cost at completion. In this case, how much it will be? What will be the actual cost at completion? The planned value is 2,400. And we divide this by the 0.4. How much it got? Anyone with calculator? 2,400 divided by 0.4. 6,000. 6,000, huh? Yeah, we, we, we buy it, 6,000. So the planned value, total planned value was 2,400, but because of this poor productivity, you must expect your project to end up with 6,000. Imagine how, how important this piece of information for you as a project manager who is dealing with project, to know what will be the future of your task. And we can also predict the time to complete completion time, total completion time, using this formula, that the T dash, estimated completed time, or estimated time to completion, is original time divided by SPR. And in this project, what, what was the original duration? It was 15, you divided by 0.5, how much it become? 22, 30. 30. 30 weeks. So, this project, if you continue doing the stuff you do, will end up 30 weeks, which means 15 weeks delay, and will be 6,000 crore. So, this is actually the whole concept of this air value. Finding plan value, end value, actual value, put them on the scale, or find the trend, find the cost performance index, find the time performance index, and predict the future. 
Now, these formulas here, the forecasting, they are actually in literature, there are like many of them. This is the simplest way of forecasting. It's like very linear. It says that it, it, it is under the assumption that the productivity, that this amount, that the SPI and the CPI will not change during the rest of the project. They will be the same. <laughs> so we assume linear relationship, which might not be true. Because sometimes people, after four weeks of working, maybe they learn better. Maybe they will be able to do things better. But this model doesn't take into account that people are getting better by time. It assumes that they will continue with the same trend. But these are only models. There are many other models which are based on the same idea. Just for clarification, one of them doesn't use actually SPI to calculate time to completion. It actually, it uses the amount of costs you have used here, it asks this question. If in order to complete this amount of work, this AC, we use this time, what, how much time we need in order to be able to complete the rest of the work? Assuming that you identified the actual cost at completion and you know your actual cost now at the time of measuring the, 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 the parameters and then you ask yourself, knowing this square, what will be this value? So here we use costs rather than time. This is, gives you accurate, better results if your plan changed underway. If you change your plan, if you move early start, if you move early finish, this one gives you more accurate result than this one. The, this one. Yes. This is very sensitive to changes of early start and early finish. This is more robust in that sense. But there are other models. But the whole idea that we have a model to predict the future. I, I, we continue with this earned value. Sometimes when we are talking about milestones, when we actually cannot measure the work underway, we, cannot, we can never go to a working place and say, we are 30% finished. We are 40% finished. When we are not able to do that, and this happens in many situations, we use this milestone. As you can see, this is our plan value. Our plan value is to finish this amount of work at this date. But then we, we, we wait until we really produce it. And we assume delay. We produced it at this point of time. We only can produce the plant value. We cannot, we cannot produce more or less, because we have to produce this amount. And then we ask ourselves how much money we have actually used. That one is the actual value. So here, when we are dealing with this end value milestone, we don't need the, the time performance index, because it's already given. What we need is the actual, is the cost performance index, because this is the only thing we can take out <coughs> from the diagram. Here, the time performance index is given in days. You are delayed by five weeks. You are delayed by two weeks. But we can learn more about the cost performance index. Now, the actual application, or the good application, for the end value comes when you have a plan. And in this plan, I took this example from Pinto. This is like a, a project where you have different activities, staffing, blueprint, prototype, design, and then the total amount of work for each month. Here you have eight, seven, six, 17. And the total planned value of this project, as you can see, is 38. And then 
at the end of this month, or at the end of month four, we went and looked at the end value. How many hours, the, amount, the things they have produced, how much it, is it worth? For instance, the staffing, the plant value was 15, and we produced 100%, this percent. What, what is the, plan, the end value then? It's 100% multiplied by 15, which is 15. And then, for the blueprint, the amount of hours needed was 10, and then you produced 80%, which gives you end value equal to 8, and so forth. Then the total amount of end value by the end of April was 30. And as you can see here, here, here is your actual cost. In January, you used 8, and February 11, 8, and 30. And then you accumulate them, and you get 40. So this is your status now. Accumulated costs are 40. Actual uh, accumulated actual cost is 40, the plant value is 38, and the end value is 30. What is your situation now? And how can we predict the future? I took these numbers, and I like graphs. I don't like these tables. I hate them. Huh? Graphs gives you a better, powerful representation. As you can see, the only numbers we know, I accumulated the plant value, this green line, this is the plant value accumulated, and this is the actual cost accumulated, and we only get one number, the end value. There, the red one. What is, what is the status of this project? Not doing that good. Not doing good, and in terms of time, they are behind the schedule, and in terms of cost, they are overrunning their budget. And it says also to, uh, to us that actually they are using more resources than plant. Right? You see, the plant value was 38, and they were using 40, which means that we have even managed to mobilize more people than plant. But yet, we, are, we were not able to produce the right amount of work. We only produced 30, we were supposed to produce 38. So this project, maybe if we analyze it, we can think, aha, maybe the problem is our resources. It's not a problem of mobilization. Maybe the problem are the people who are doing this work. Maybe they, don't, they are not experienced, maybe they don't have enough knowledge, maybe they are the wrong people for the job, or maybe the job is too complex for them. Maybe our estimates was wrong. So these are the things you should really think about to explain why this number and what can you do about these numbers. And this is very important if you want to learn end value. Yes, true, you build your, your, your uh, SQL, you put the values, you calculate, you make the trend, but you have to explain that to, to, to your team. So these are the numbers again. As you can see here, you have the schedule performance endings, the SPI, is around 80%, which if you want to find out how much time you need to really to complete your project, you easily calculate it, you find out that you need one month more to take that, the difference. And the cost variance, here you have the cost performance index is 75%, and again, you, you make your calculation and you figure out that you need actually 50 units rather than 38 units. And it takes you, it will take you one more month. So, analyzing what you see, what you look at, is quite important. I will draw some diagrams to you, and I want you to tell me how you analyze these projects, okay? Just two, three diagrams to see if you captured the idea behind end value and that sort of things. So let's say 
This is your plan value. And this is your actual cost. And this is your something like that. End value. And everybody can see that. And this is your plan value. And this is your actual cost. And this is your end value. Well, this is the plan value. Land value, end value, and actual cost. So we have three diagrams represent three situations. So who can tell me what is the situation here? And let's assume that we have this is taken from a project where you have a duration of 30 weeks. And this will taken after three weeks. What is your expectations to this project? Same here. Very, very, very long duration. 30 weeks. And this were taken, let's say, four weeks. Just a number. And this one is taken after 25 weeks. And the duration is 30. So what, is, what do you say about that? Which, is, which one you would rather be a project manager for? And why? Who would like to try? Yes? The project is going really good because actual cost is low. Yeah, and now first observation, as he said, yes, the actual cost is far less than the planned value, right? And what else? And the earned value is high, and the value is, is high. going ahead. Yes, so here, actually, what we can interpret is that although our planned value is located here, we have failed to mobilize enough resources. And even, even, even that, our team of people have managed to produce almost, almost two times more than what the things have costed us. And even though we have not mobilized enough people, what they have produced is far more or quite more than the planned value. So here, one can say that this project really looks very, very nice. But then you can stop a little bit. Because what you need to consider is when, did, when this was taken. It was taken only three weeks after the start of the project. So this is something you need to take into consideration. We can, we really is very difficult to say that this is the rest of project will continue like that. Because at the beginning, the tasks are more easy. People are engaged. They want to do a good work. And the tasks are easy. So in order to be able to really succeed, we need to do these measurements often. We need to make a trend rather than just measuring one time. Trend. But your analysis, analysis is right. This is a good project. What about this? Well, somebody else? Anyone? Yes. Uh, so you're not able to, to save as much? You have used a bit more than what you expected? You have a little bit, yes, than expected. But you have still achieved to do what you have done. You what you, what you have, a, bit a little bit more. So here, yeah, it's true. You have mobilized more than what you're supposed to. Huh? 
and you have you are slightly behind schedule, and you are slightly uh, uh, over. So here again, considering the, this is the time, huh? So it is not bad. But are you are you uh, behind of schedule or? I uh, no, uh, said so ahead of schedule, slightly ahead of schedule, but slightly uh, over. For because the end value is higher than the clock value. So time wise, this is very good, but cost wise is not that good. Which means that if you want really to rectify the situation, you must say. Well, since we are really ahead of schedule, why we mobilize more than necessary? Maybe we should reduce the amount of resources we are using so that we can take again the, the cost over them. And we don't need to finish that fast because we are already ahead of schedule. What about this? The planned value, earned value, and actual value. What, any comments about that? Yeah, it's just perfect planning actually. You have managed to use the resources you said you would use. Yes. And you're where you want to be. Exactly. This is a theoretically wonderful thing, but it never happened. That's a lie. This one, <laughs> it never happened. There is a site, you can check it yourself, it's called How to Cheat on Earn Value. And one of the things we can do to cheat on end value is to make the plan as we go. We make the measurements and then we fix the plan to fit the measurements we, we take. And then you can get something like that. But in practice, this is almost impossible to get it all the way right. That must be some cheating involved. So, Advice again, try to look at different forms of this end value. And remember, in order to really, really get right data from this end value management, you need a trend. One, one, one piece of data is not enough. So how do we calculate the end value? This is a summary. One method we use is the zero one rule. You have one work package, and the planned value of this work package is 500 hours. We say as long as this work package is not completed, the end value is zero. And then when we complete it, the end value is 500. So here we look at the slip. We cannot produce more than the end value. We cannot uh, more than plan value or less than the plan value. So we here just look at the slip. The second one is 50-50 rule. We can look at the amount of work produced and as long as it is less than 50%, we say zero. End value is zero. More than 50%, we say it's 50%. Sometimes you have 25, 50, 75, 100. And the third method we use is simply promise. We look at amount of the work, you see 30% finished, 40% finished, 50% of that land value. So we have to have, at the end of the day, you need to know your land value. If you don't know your land value, the end value method is useless. Doesn't make any sense. Another example, very short one. We assume that we have a, a small project where it's about producing 100 functions. It's a software thing. And we say that our estimation base, because we have done this before, we know this task very well. So our estimation says that we need two hours per function. So what is our total time? How much time we need to do this work? Obviously, uh, 200. And we assume also an even resource profile. Even resource profile <coughs> means that our S-curve looks like that. This is our S-curve. We need 20 <coughs> weeks or day, uh, days uh, and 200 hours. And just a straight line. And it is still called a scale. 
So, at the end of day five, we count. You see here, it is zero one principle. Have you finished this function or you have not finished this function? If you finished it, then you, it counts. It counts two hours. At the end of the day five, we counted the amount of functions in the software. We found out that the result is 10 functions. So we produce 10 functions. And each one is worth two hours, right? So what is the end value in this case? Is 10 multiplied by 2, which is 20. And then we went and looked at the actual cost. We, looked, we went to this accountant department and asked them how many hours these software developers have produced. They told us they send us bills for 40 hours. So, and the planned thing, your plan at the end of day five is 50 man hours according to your plan. So what is the status of your project? You put everything on this curve and this is your end value and this is your actual value and this is your plan value. As you can see, you have a time overrun, time delay and you have as well cost overrun. And we can use the information in order to make estimation. Because your SPI is 40% and your CPI is 50%. And you can adjust and you can, you can see that you have a resource variance. So what, what are the options you have? What are your options? It looks like you have your resources are using more, than, more time than they should. So obviously you could cha change your resources, get better people to do that job. Or maybe your, your, your idea that we need two hours per function is very, very optimistic. Maybe you need to change your plan. You make, rather than make it a sharp, as scared, maybe you need to flat it out a little bit, use longer time, because people using less, are producing less hours per time unit. I told you that in many situations, looking at one thing here, like at one measurement, doesn't really give you a good idea about your project because it's only one point in time. In order to solve this problem, we actually use what we call indexes, the trends. Each time we measure the end value and the plan value and the actual value, we draw a diagram. And it's called trend diagram. And in this diagram, it is simple because, you know, all your indexes, it, they are something either more than one or less than one. So you have, in the middle here, this is your 100%. And here are the control time, T1, T2, T3, the, the, the point of time that you conducted control. And you come at T1, what is your SPI? Is it over one, over 100% or less than one? It could be here and next period, it's here. Next period is here, next period is here. <coughs> Aha. So your SPI is really good. And then you can look at CPI. You can notice that it was here and it started getting down and start getting down and up. Uh -huh. So you could see now, well, this project time-wise, it's very, very well. Cost-wise, it was in descending trend, but luckily we start doing the right thing. So this gives you better uh, tool to analyze your situation rather than looking at just one thing. So for this project, for instance, 
you have your CPI is going down the drain, right? And your SPI is going up. What is the situation? Can we draw from this information? Can we draw the planned value, any value and actual value? Can you do that? If we assume like linear planned value, not very complicated profile, just linear profile. Can we draw the planned value and the actual value to see how nearly this project went about? So one of them is going up, the other is going down. What say you? So how shall I draw? Just we can try something like this. This is our plan value. Just something linear, okay? So at the first period, as you can see, the SPI and the CPI, both of them were less than one. What does it mean when both of them less than one? It means that here you could have your n value, right? And since the CPI is also less, less than one, then where, where is the actual cost should be? A little bit above, right? So here is. This is actual cost. And then this one is getting better. The, the SPI is getting better, correct? Which means that it's going something like that. And at one point of time, it even become more sharper. Huh? Something like that. See, this is your end value. And how is your actual cost looks like? It's even more sharper upwards, correct? Let's go something like this. And all the way, you can, I don't have enough place in the black part. So this one is here. N value and then this one giving way even more high. This is how we convert from trend to a linear graph or uh, a curve, accumulated as curve. This is how it looked like. And what about this? All of them, SPI and CPI, are really going down. And then at week three, they start to, yeah, not they become better, but less worse. So what is the situation here? How can we understand? Anyone would like to draw it? Show me the drawing. To call him, her, him or her the hero of the day. So this is our plan value again, just a straight line. So you say that this is our plan value, right? Huh? So the EV will go going down. The yes, it's all the way down, something like that, and it's going down and down. So it means that it's opening. The distance between them is widening. Is widening until week three, which is a little become a little bit better, but not significant. But they are widening. But what about the CPI? Uh, the AC is getting bigger compared to the EV. Yes, it is something maybe something like that as well. Correct, because it is widening, even though. So yes, that's. Correct answer, very good. Since we don't have really accurate information about how much is this PV, so this one can be placed here or can be placed here. The most important is that it's compared to in value, it's widening. And between them, compared to the planned value, they are widening. But this one can be placed anywhere. 
above or lower than the value because we really don't know. We don't have numbers to work with. Okay, very well. 